We are being asked from time to time where the grave of Vlad the Impaler may be located. In the last months, we invested some time and effort into clarifying this question as much as possible based on contemporary reports and archaeological evidence. According to the local tradition, the Voivode was buried in the Snagov Monastery Church, which could be further sustained by the Country Chronicle, which mentions Vlad as being Snagov's founder. However, there is no surviving document, which mentions Vlad as being the founder or even a more important donator of the monastery. But let's suppose that the Chronicle and the local tradition were based on some lost evidence and Vlad therefore had some link to the monastery which may have pushed the monks into taking and burying his body in the church. Unfortunately, the archaeological research from the 1930s indicates that today's stone church was built in the 16th century, and that it seems that none of the old graves has survived. The attribution of one of the skeletons with Vlad, as was done by Stoichescu in his biography, therefore cannot be correct. As is stated by Rezakevich, See his article, The Tomb of Vlad the Impaler. The stone church was built by the Kryoveshti boyars who were in the 16th century fierce enemies of Minya the Bad, the son of Vlad. It is therefore unlikely that they would have put Vlad's skeleton in a new grave. Otherwise, we do not know about comparable cases where a grave was rebuilt in such a way. See, for example, the Glavichok Monastery where the bones of Vlad the monk seem to have been exhumed in the early modern period and mixed with skeletons of other graves and finally reburied altogether. If Vlad's grave really was in Snagov, then it is lost today. Besides Snagov, Rezakovich pled for another possibility, the Kamana Monastery in the southern region of Bucharest. There are several arguments in favor of this place. According to the local tradition, the monastery was founded by Vlad. Archaeological evidence as collected by the famous archaeologists Adrian and Leah Batrana during the excavations in 1971-72 support this tradition. The church was built in the mid 15th century. It was made of wooden, but had an exterior plastering, which made it too expensive for having been constructed by some local boyar. The other main argument in favor of the Kamana tomb is that Vlad must have died nearby in December 1476. The monastery is located between the Jurju Fortress, which was an Ottoman possession, and the Voyevodal Court of Bucharest. The fact that the monastery is situated on a hill may hint at the Russian Dracula story. Its author claims, after having talked to the Dracula family in Hungary in the 1480s, that Vlad went up on a hill for overviewing the battle against the Turks, and was then killed by his own soldiers. Rozakovich argues that after Vlad's head was cut off and sent to the Sultan, the monks from the monastery very likely took the corpse and buried him there. Rozakovich further tried to corroborate his hypothesis by stating that one of the skeletons found in the monastery was headless. Here is where the bad news start. I went to the archive of the former Department of Historical Monuments in Bucharest to have a look at the original reports of the excavations, hoping to find more information than was published in the article with the official results. Revista Musilor Schur Monumentalor 1974 numbered 1, and maybe even photographs. Unfortunately, there are no indications that the grave Nombauer, 59, as hypothesized by Rozakovich, may be Vlad, nor can any other grave be linked to him. There are several arguments. 1. No grave could be found within the old church, later destroyed and overbuilt by the dormitories of the monks. Of course, there could actually be a grave because in some areas there were no excavations, but it's not very likely. 2. No voivode was ever buried outside of a church on the cemetery with the normal people, not even when his grave had to be hidden, as for example Mircha Chobanu's grave in the church of the voivodal court. 3. The old Kamana monastery was never a voivodal necropolis. The people buried there were quite poor as can be seen by the very few objects found in their graves. Most of them were monks. 4. There is no skeleton without a skull, as was confirmed by Adrian Batrana himself, who was recently asked about it by a member of our team. 
Dr. Batrana further said he would of course have made it public if there was any chance to identify a skeleton as being Vlad. Dr. Batrana is an expert for grave excavations and DNA analyses. See his research on the Muschettini graves in Radauzzi a few years ago. Also, the rumor is wrong that the skeletons of the cemetery were brought to the Mina Minovich Institute in Bucharest. They are still in their burying places. It seems that Razakovich had faulty information on the results of the excavations and popularized the Kamana hypothesis due to his famous stance as an important medievalist, which he is without any doubt. Consequently, Vlad's grave may be unmarked somewhere in the southern Bucharest and northern Danube area, or he was simply thrown into the Danube, if we suppose that he may have died attacking the Jurju fortress as he did with success in January 1462, or dismembered and the parts taken or thrown away. He was quite famous in the Ottoman Empire and the remains of some other Christian commanders like Skanderbeg or the Moldovan Vojvode John the Terrible met such a fate. It is quite unlikely that he died north of Bucharest, which was his voivodal court and had therefore to be defended. If his skeleton or only parts of it would have been preserved, forensic specialists could have analyzed it like British scientists did with the bones of Richard III. With impressive results, just watch the documentaries on YouTube. And of course, a phenotypical DNA analysis would have been possible, which could tell us even without his head what he looked like. And of course, if the portraits are really showing him and not someone else. Of course, this is no reason not to visit the Kamana Monastery, which deserves more than any other place to be a memorial for Vlad the Impaler. We are looking forward to go there. We have a more detailed video about this subject on our main Romanian channel. You can find the link to it in the description.